All right, I want to do the demo. Hopefully it still works. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to demo my lab uh, 10. Uh, this is the data I've been promising you um, for a while. Uh, what this was is uh, I, had a, I had an afternoon with, with uh, 20 high school kids, and I gave them all the, um, uh, I gave them all the function, gen not the, the, the power supply and the oscilloscope. Okay, and a separate motor, and what we did is uh, adjust the voltage to the motor, okay, uh, right here. We increased the voltage from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in steps, and uh, <clears throat> measured the voltage and the current, and then used the tachometer, uh, used the oscilloscope on the tach to measure the frequency. And a couple of interesting things uh, uh, present itself is, first of all, if you try to measure, try to plot voltage versus current, it, it's not a straight line. It's remarkably constant current. But once it gets going, see that? Once it gets going, it's pretty constant. Okay? Uh, and this goes to my... This goes to my, my equation that we saw earlier, and that is that the power to the motor, the voltage is constant because you're fixing it as a constant. The current is approximately constant. What's varying, the only real variable here is the duty cycle. Uh, but it's not, how do you, be, how do you, would you describe, how did that happen, by the way? What kind of element has this behavior? It's a motor, okay? It's a motor, by the way. So it has mass. What else does it have? It has inductance, uh, and this is not inductance happening because this is completely steady state, by the way. This is steady state voltage and steady state current. So this is not the inductor. It's the other one. There's no capacitance in this system. What's the, what's the other el a circuit element in the DC motor? Remember? What was the other element? The EMF. The EMF. Okay. The friction. So at one volt, okay, if you put one volt across here, you've got a one volt right here, okay, or whatever it is. You're getting some current, so. But it's not, it's sucking up all that energy just to try to stay put because it's, it's got friction. Okay? And current is flowing, but the motor's not spinning because of this EMF. And once it starts spinning, again, what can cause this flat behavior? Right? It's not the inductor because it's constant voltage. It's... Not the resistor, because the resistor would have been linear. What causes that current to be virtually constant as a function of voltage while the motor's spinning? Okay, there's only one element left, right? It's that EMF getting in our way. So can somebody say this is not linear? Okay, this is not linear. Um, uh, and so if you plot... If you also plot power, which is, and they didn't have any duty cycle, so it was just voltage times current, as a function of speed, you see right here that I dumped up to 100 milliwatts into this system. In other words, one volt times uh, this point right here, okay, put in one volt, had 100 milliamps, and it wasn't spinning. It wasn't moving yet. Okay? And it wasn't until we popped up the two volts that it started spinning up here uh, at about 25 RPS. Okay? So this is our first notice that it's nonlinear. Okay? Um, the second is you notice I got eight motors, I got eight, di eight different responses. Again, that tells me I need a tachometer. Okay? Uh, and what would this curve look like if I, if I added friction, by the way? What do you suppose would happen to this curve in the presence of more friction? 
More coming. Well, I'm not, not do that one. Let's do this one. Okay. It, if I add more friction, there's this point at which it doesn't spin will move to the right, and then the curve will be down. I don't know what the slopes may be different to. Um, because again, it's going to take more power to. So this is the the, the rationale for why we need a, a a a controller, a tachometer, and because if all you were presented with this and you said let's spin at 50 RPS, right? Let's spin at 50 RPS. We have quite a bit of range of set powers depending on which motor I chose. Or in our case, which high school student did the measurement? But it's mostly motor variation, and not 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 observer variation. All right. So here's our here's our um, our loop again, and now we're going to do just the integral part. Okay, just the integral part. So we're just going to have the integral part, uh, and uh, and then we're just going to. So we have one variable, by the way. You see that? We just got one number. We got to pick. We just and get the sign right. You got that? Remember that? Get the sign right. Uh, and so we're going to implement an equation that takes the error, again the error, which is the desired speed. Oh yes. Take the error, which is the desired speed minus the measured speed. And then we're going to, uh, it turns out, since we're running at uh, 10 milliseconds, uh, that's a constant. So I'm actually going to incorporate those two coefficients into one coefficient. And again, this is my duty cycle here. Um, and again, the important thing is to make sure it doesn't over and underflow. Controller speed. Uh, yeah, I'm going to limit my my u here, uh, the h plus l for for my system was forty thousand. So I'm going to limit the u between a hundred and thirty nine thousand uh, to keep it fine. Okay. That's like your your gas pedal, right? You can't go further than the carpet. Right? You can't go further than up all the way can't make it go negative. You can't make it stop by let you know negative gas. Okay, you can't do that. Uh, and you can't go faster than that's intended. And so again, the intuition is I'm going to add a lot. If the if the error is pos positive and large, I'm going to subtract a lot. If it's negative and large, I'm going to add a little or subtract a little when I'm close. And I'm going to leave it totally alone if it goes to zero. It'll never get to zero but because it will oscillate. Uh, there's my actual code. Uh, well, this is the, uh, this is the, yeah, there's my controller. This is the thing running at, yeah, running at, I think this is running at, at 10 milliseconds. Um, this is the, this is the equation I did last time that converts the period measurement into a speed in RPS, or at least a speed in 0.1 RPS. Uh, there is the, uh, the definition of a controller error, which is the difference between E star and measured speed. <coughs> uh, let's see what else can I say about that. Uh, why are these globals, <coughs> by the way? Why aren't they not static locals? I made them global so I can put them in the watch window of the debugger and watch them. These are the, I'm going to dump these when, it, when I put in a run. Uh, and there's my, there's my integral. That's my integral. That's how complicated it is. And it doesn't really matter whether that's a 2, 3, 4, or 5. Now, if you change this number by 10 and make this 1 RPS, you're going to want to reduce this guy by 10. Uh, this has got a fancy, uh, this has got a fancy word in the control system. This is called anti-reset windup. 
which is just a fancy way of saying don't be stupid, buddy. Okay? Don't make it more than 100% or less than 0%. And this particular duty cycle, this particular program doesn't actually get all the way to 100%. Uh, but I suffice to say that 39 over 400 is pretty close to 100%. And then I output a new duty cycle. And we saw this function last time. I'd like to demonstrate lab 10. There's the motor spinning. Uh, the tachometer interface is here, and the Darlington transistor interface is over there. Uh, the microcontroller outputs a pulse width modulated output, and the tachometer reads period or frequency to tell me how fast it's running. Over on the oscilloscope, I have two channels. The uh, orange channel here and we can see that it's currently running at a fixed frequency of 1 kilohertz and a duty cycle of about uh, 59 uh, percent. And then the blue channel is the tachometer. Okay? And this tachometer is a measure of speed. And at this current measurement, we can see it's about 120 hertz. Uh, you divide that by 4, and we can see that it's rotating at about 30 RPS. So the idea here is we measure the period, calculate the frequency, divide by 4, and that tells us how fast it's spinning. All right, let me show you some stuff. Let me put this back on running. OK, I'm going to turn it on, and you're going to watch the initial speed up. Okay. OK, so it initializes the display. It notices the thing is stopped, so it gives it a lot of uh, power. And then the light blue line here is a measure of the expected or desired speed. And the blacker line here is the measured speed. And you can see that this integral controller takes a certain amount of time to reach steady state. The oscillations around steady state is controlled, called the controller error. And the time it took for it to go from one speed to another is called the transient response. And you can see also that this controller is stable. In other words, it doesn't wildly um, oscillate. If I were to introduce a load or a friction, okay, by sticking my finger in front of the tape, watch what happens. There was a temporary decrease in the speed as I put a force on the system. But you can see that it will eventually reach a new steady state. And we did that by adding more power to the motor. You can see that the duty cycle now has jumped up to 68%. And I'm going to release the friction. OK, watch. Here we go. Release the friction. There's a temporary overshoot as it spins too fast. And the duty cycle is now adjusted back down to 61%. All right, let's try another thing. Let's change the set point. I just increased the set point. You can see it. it is now searching a new speed. Again, the time it takes to reach a new steady state value after a change in set point uh, is called the controller transient response. And let me decrease the speed. OK. And now I've just decreased the speed a lot. Okay. And again, the controller will now reach a new steady state. We can see here now that it's spinning at about 20 RPS. And if you go back to the tachometer, you can see that uh, it's measuring um, uh, about 80 hertz. And 80 divided by 4 is the 20 RPS. So in summary, there are three controller aspects. The first is controller error. Okay? And that is the average difference here between the blue and the black curves. And the second is transient response. Okay. And you can see here that the transient response is a couple of seconds for it to reach the new steady state. This is the parameters of the integral controller. And the last is stability. Uh, this particular motor is, is stable uh, because of the integral nature of the controller. In other words, there are no wild oscillations. All right, now you try.